five most haunted places in Australia. The Quarantine Station. Located near Manly, the Quarantine Station operated for 152 years from 1832. It was built to process potentially diseased immigrants when they entered Australia. Thankfully, we don't need that anymore because we've got our own quarantine station to protect us from all those scary, dangerous, terrifying immigrants. Where was Pauline then? Some 600 people died at the quarantine station. Some from diseases including the bubonic plague. People have been experiencing creepy shit here for over a century. People have seen figures in unoccupied hospital wards, felt sick, been told to get out by eerie voices, and perhaps most creepily of all, a small girl has been seen with blonde plaits who holds tourists' hands and walks them around the station. Fuck you. The National Film and Sound Archive. Now it sounds like a shit boring name, but this building once housed something much creepier. For over 50 years, this building was the home to the National Institute of Anatomy, where thousands of human remains were housed for scientific study. This building contained a morgue and a room full of human skulls, which is pretty much some Joseph Fritzl shit. Since its closure, people have claimed to have seen spirits and had a general feeling of being creeped the fuck out. One worker in the building even claimed he was pinned against a wall by a malevolent invisible force. The Princess Theatre in Melbourne has stood for 163 years and for many of those years it is said to have been haunted. On the 3rd of March 1888, Frederick Frederici was performing in a play. In the final scene of the play, Frederici was to be lowered into the gates of hell by a trap door. However, when Frederici was lowered, he suffered a heart attack and died immediately. Frederici's body wasn't found until after the show, but many people in the audience, as well as cast and crew members, claimed they saw Frederici taking his final bow with his cast members on the stage, somehow after his death. What an attention-seeking whore. Isn't it enough that you're dead? You need more people to care about you, so you jump back on stage and bow? Get over yourself, Frederici. Please don't haunt me. The Monte Cristo Homestead. A dead caretaker in 1961. A disabled boy kept locked in a shed for decades. A young boy killed when he was dropped down the stairs. A pregnant maid killed when she fell from a balcony. And a dead boy after a fire does scream to me what a great place to stay. People have seen many apparitions, felt cold spots, heard footsteps and even been possessed. When the current owner and her late husband arrived at the home in 1963, the entire house was lit up, despite having no electricity connected. When they walked inside the home, every single light turned off. Now this is what pisses me off about some of these ghost stories. They, they experience something absolutely fucking terrifying and then they decide to stay there. Move the fuck out. I don't know, rent it. Do something. Don't just stay there and then bitch and moan when stuff starts haunting you. If you turn up at a house that you've never been to before, and why would you turn up in the middle of the night anyway, and it's all lit up and you've got no electricity connected, and then all the lights turn off, fucking leave. Port Arthur. Port Arthur in Tasmania began its demonic history in the 1830s as a timber station. Before long it became a convict prison for the worst of the worst from England and Ireland. Paranormal experiences were recorded on the site as far back as the 1800s. This made the site a very popular tourist destination and in 1996 it was also the location of the deadliest mass shooting in Australian history. 35 people were killed. 23 were injured. Port Arthur has been the place of over a thousand people's deaths. The vast majority of these deaths occurred in horrendous circumstances. People have seen strange lights, people have said they've been choked. One tourist even had a two minute conversation with an English officer wearing a red coat, but according to the staff at Port Arthur, he was never there. Another tourist group spotted a man dressed in convict uniform who was peeking out at them behind a cell, pulling faces at the tourists. 
group thought he was just an actor and they enjoyed the game. Until about an hour later, when two ladies in the group identified the photo of the actor who was John Gould, a convicted rapist who had died a hundred years earlier.